Hey, what's up? It's your girl Jess. Today I'm gonna be sharing my fitness story with you. Try my best to keep it short and sweet, but you know, it's a long journey and sorry, <laughs> it's gonna be a lengthy one, but it's been like a spiritual journey and physical journey and a mental journey and it's a lot. Um, I might even have to make a part two just to tell the spiritual aspects of it because it was just so much things to unpack and such a long journey. But I hope that it helps someone and uh, I would appreciate the, if you would add some comments, you know, like, subscribe, add comments. I would love to hear part of your journey as well. So I hope this helps someone. Let's get into it. So um, I had a lot of things that was going on at once. First one started when I was working at a particular company, absolutely loved it. I was a programmer and developer at the same time. I mean programmer. I was a designer and programmer at the same time. So I got to design the applications and then I got to code the design into the app. Um, loved it, couldn't believe they paid me to do it. Um, enjoyed working there but one of the perks was they fed you and they fed you a lot and there was a break room that had every kind of snack in it that you could ever think of it was there um they had soda machines with 20 ounce sodas in there and those free candy um popcorn cheez its snickers whatever it, it was there and then they would feed you breakfast in the morning so it'd be donuts and um and bagels and stuff like that and then um they had lunch often, so there was always something to eat. Uh, I gained a lot of weight when I worked there. Um, but one of the main things that kind of happened was I started eating these peanuts because the Cheez-Its, well, okay, my breakfast every day was Cheez-Its and coffee. So <laughs> every day, Cheez-Its and coffee. And then like for lunch, like if I couldn't get out and get something, I would go grab a bag of planters peanuts and drink a soda. So um, I started like really upping and increasing the, the, the peanuts that I was eating. Um, I didn't think anything of it, uh, but then all of a sudden the company gets bought out and they no longer need a designer and I don't want to code. Like I, I don't like coding like that. I, I really like designing and coding was a medium that I was using to be able to do design. So once the design went up, went out is like I can't work here anymore so the fact that it got the company got bought out they didn't need my services anymore they wanted to keep me as a programmer which I could have stayed but I'm like no like I freaked out and pretty much had like a panic attack um I ended up in the ER heart rate was really high um and they the docs thought I had tachycardia but they didn't they didn't have a reason every time i went to go get checked out they didn't have a reason for why my heart rate was that high but it was high abnormally so um so there was that i went to go um they got my heart rate down uh, told me to go see my primary care doctor so i went to go see her and it, they ended up putting me on a water pill for blood pressure and um you know and to kind of basically watch the heart rate thing. Uh, eventually, um, I just start complaining about like having headaches, like around, like I had tension band, like all the way around my head. It, like it, it didn't like hurt. It was just like a tight rubber band around my head. And so my heart rate didn't come down. Like when I went to the doctor's office, it was still high. Um, resting heart rate easy, like 150. Um, so coupling that with, you know, my blood pressure hadn't come down, it switched me up and I, and the, the water pill, I think like it just made my heart race. Like I, I felt like it, my heart was beating out of my chest. So they pulled me off of the water pill and they put me on uh, a medication that would control the blood pressure and the heart rate. I feel like at this point, I'm too young to be taking blood pressure medication. And um, it just seemed like the medication wasn't going down. It was like going up. So at this time, I'm working in a different job, really enjoy it. I'm a full-blown designer at this point. And um, 
I love it, but then COVID hits. So um, right around this issue, right around this period of time, we're all coming home for, for COVID and um, you know, nobody wants to be out on the streets and whatnot. But like my female issues are like getting worse. So like um, I would, my menstrual cycles were really heavy and really painful, like really painful. It was like a massacre every every month. Um, I couldn't take it. Like I couldn't take it so much. I got to the point where I, I had to do. I, I I told myself I had to do um, birth control, and um, I started on a birth control that just didn't. It 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 alleviated the pain, but didn't alleviate the massacre. So I'm like, why can't I just take a Depo-Vera shot? It's three months where you don't have to um, have a cycle at all. Like this would be great. So I have this high blood pressure. I had this high blood pressure issue, and then I turn around and 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 the high heart rate issue. And then I turn around and I add a Depo Vera shot to it. So um, they said it might increase your blood pressure, but you know, might <laughs> yeah. So I took the shot, and sure enough. Cycle goes away for three months. Everything is great. But after that, we're in the middle of the COVID scare and, you know, it's time to get the, the, the second shot. So I don't want to leave. So I end up trying to give myself the shot. Um, I did, I feel like I did it correctly, except for there, I had breakthrough bleeding and then I had a cycle that like I started, I started my cycle for three whole months. So I thought I did it wrong, you know, I'm like, maybe I messed up. So I'm like, maybe if I, the next time around, maybe if I have someone do it professionally, the bleeding will stop and, you know, I, I, it'll be all fixed. So I go into the doctor and I have, um, going to my uh, gyno visit, have them uh, administer a shot. Doesn't stop the bleeding, so I have another three months. So a total of six months. Uh, and actually it totaled for a, an entire year. Um, I just, I literally bled for a whole year. Um, it was not great. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on. I still had the tension headache, um, around my head pretty much every day. I was dizzy all the time. Um, I had this whole cycle thing going on and like, I would have this excruciating pain that would happen. Um, and so I went to the gyno and discovered that I had fibroids the size of softballs. Um, and so we have, we've got all this stuff going on. They're actually so big at this point um, that they were cutting off their own blood supply and that was excruciating pain. Um, and so I'm ready to get my uterus cut out. I'm ready to get a hysterectomy. And we've got all of this stuff going on all at once. So here's a lot of stuff. And I'm like, um, and I'm at this point, I just feel like I'm gonna die. Like I was literally waiting around to die. Um, and I, I talked to my guy and she gave me all the info about getting the, the um, fibroids removed or a hysterectomy. I went and talked to a family member and they gave me advice against the hysterectomy. They said they had it and if they had a chance to do it again, they wouldn't do it. So I told that information to my husband and he said, cause I, I took all the information to him. I was like, what do you think? He said, I want you to come up on the medications. I said, huh? Like, I was like, that's not what I asked you. I was like, I'm asking you about this hysterectomy and what do you think? He was like, I want you to come up on the medications. So I was like, okay. So I do that. I'm going to have to drastically change my diet. And he was like, I don't care what you do. I just want you to come off all the medications. So I was like, okay. Instantly, I remember this guy was on the keto diet. So I start looking that up. And then I start looking up the vegan diet. And just when I was getting ready to do the vegan diet, I made my decision and I was like, nope, gonna do keto. So I started the keto diet. Um, 
lost a bunch of weight. Like I lost a whole bunch of weight and um, I lost 30 pounds to be exact. Um, and uh, I still had, I still had the, um, I still had the tension headaches. Like at this point, I, my decision for doing a keto diet was to, it was the start of it was because of the fibroids, but I ended, continued to do it because I wanted to lower my blood pressure. So <clears throat> the fibroid issue resolved on its own because I just forgot all about it. So like I was, I was eating healthy, I was eating, you know, whole foods and like vegetables and, you know, like meat and dairy and stuff like that, but I was just eating whole foods, um, like avocados, um, uh, lots of broccoli, lots of spinach, lots of, lots of leafy greens and stuff like that. I mean, I hadn't had any more issues with the female, my female issues, you know, and honestly, I had been waiting for the pain to start again, and it's been three years, and that has not happened. So that part has rectified itself. Um, so I'm thanking and praising God for that. Thank, thank you, Jesus, for that, because, like, it has been three years since I've had an excruciating pain, painful cycle. I haven't had to take any medication for uh, cycles each month. Um, <clears throat> it took a whole year to get that dip old stuff out of, out of my system. But then after that, I have regular cycles, or the regular amount they should be, and they're not painful. So there was that. I lost 30 pounds, so my highest point, I was 174 pounds. So like now, the, the, the most weight I've lost, I've got down to 145. So a heart rate thing, that one, um, that one got rectified because in the middle of eating a keto diet, um, I decided I had been doing the keto diet for about a whole year. And then I decided I'm going to switch over to vegan because my blood pressure hadn't come down. So I was like, I'll switch over to the vegan diet. So, um, in the keto diet, there are no snacks you can really eat if you're going to do it cleanly. Um, I don't think people should eat snacks in the first six months anyway. Uh, you need to focus on actually doing the diet. Um, but, uh, if you're going to eat a snack, it's pretty much meat sticks, cheese, and pork rinds, stuff like that, like olives and stuff. So, uh, I was like, well, you can eat some nuts, you know? So I was eating almonds for a snack. And then when I switched over to the vegan diet, I ate more almonds. And, uh, I had an Apple watch on at the time. So I was always constantly looking down at my heart rate. It was always high. Um, so I was kind of used to it. And then, um, one day I grabbed, uh, the bag of almonds and I head off to a meeting and, uh, I plan on snacking throughout the meeting, but I just got so busy being involved in the meeting. I didn't get a chance to, uh, <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to actually snack. So at the end of the meeting, I glanced down at my watch. And usually, you know, I'm looking at like 164 or 150 or something like that for the heart rate. Um, like it's, I'm looking at, I'm expecting to see something high, but it was like 76 beats per minute. And I was like, what, wait a minute, what did I do? What, what did I not do? And immediately I saw that bag of almonds I didn't eat. So I was like, that, that has to be it. That, so I'm like, I'm going to do an experiment and not eat almonds for an entire week. Heart rate stayed in the, in the 70s. So it was either 72, 76, 74, 78, but it was in the 70s. I'm like, that's it. So now I don't have a rapid heartbeat anymore. I, I lost all of this weight. Um, I don't have any female issues anymore at this point. And, you know, I still, I still have the high blood, I still have the high blood pressure at that point. And, um, and I still was dizzy and I still had the tension headache. So, so th those three points weren't, 
weren't uh, complete. But a lot of stuff had happened, you know, in, in this journey. So I'm just sticking to my keto diet. Everything is great. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like November 2021. And um, my sister comes to me and starts talking to me about, to this, about this chiropractor that she met and how he, like sh she really thinks I should meet him because she's able to do things she had never done before. And uh, she just makes him, she, he makes her feel like she can do things, you know, like, I don't know. She just ran and raved about him and how much of he, a teacher he was. And uh, I was like, I'll go see him. I was like, I don't need a chiropractor, but I'll go see him. And uh, she, she convinces me to go, uh, to go visit him. And I heard from him the heart of a teacher, a person who had the heart of a teacher. And uh, I, I was like, I, that's all I care about. I just care about do you know what you're talking about and uh, will I get the goals that I, I'm trying to reach, you know, and, and will you share with me how I got there? So um, I agreed to work with him and uh, for the first phase it was um, kind of him getting to know me and what I was able to do. Uh, but one of the goals that I wanted to work on was a pull-up. and. At the end of that phase, I wasn't able to do a pull-up, so I was very unhappy about that. Um, uh, but he was like, uh, and he asked me if I want to do a phase two. I said, yes, I do, but I really want to do pull-ups. So he was like, we're going to really focus on doing pull-ups. So while we were in the phase two, we were doing these 3D body scans. We were doing the body scans all throughout, but it, like I didn't, I didn't look at them. The, the second phase, I, I really looked at the body scan. I asked him, why does my neck look hunched over? You know, like literally, why does my neck look like the, you know, hunchback of Nord, Notre Dame? You know, like it was literally like out there. And he was like, he was like, we can correct that. He was like, I'm going to have to pull your so shoulders back. And he was like, that's perfect because you want to do pull-ups anyway that's going to be a whole back exercise. So we're going to just focus on your back, pulling those back muscles, um, getting your back muscles to be pulled back. And um, we worked on that in the entire phase two, along with really pushing the limits of fitness. Now, mind you, I thought before I started any of this fitness journey, I thought I was going to die. Like, I was so dizzy all the time. I hated the fact when my husband ever had to leave because I, I had little kids at the time. And I'm like, I'm the only person if I here, if I fall out, my little kids can't do anything to save me. You know, like, I literally thought I couldn't move. Here comes phase two where I am doing the things I had never thought I'd be doing, you know. Um... I mean, heck, I thought if I ran, I'd pass out. Ran just fine, you know? So I'm, like, increasing my belief at this moment of, of me, you know? Like, I'm, I, I, I went from a thought process of I can't do anything to <clears throat> look at all that I'm able to do. Um, I wowed myself. I wowed myself. And, um... I, I was, I don't know, I wowed myself. And then by the end of that phase, I was able to do two pull-ups. I had never, ever done a pull-up in my life. And here goes two of them being cranked out. And so now it's like, wow, you know, I didn't know that. So I start working on this phase three we start really going ham on the shoulders. We started going ham on uh, the back muscles. We started going ham on um, like core and abs and stuff like that. Uh, and we started hitting. This is the first time I used the leg press machine, you know, and oh my gosh, there were so many mental lessons that was learned at the gym. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of. 
And so <clears throat> now, you know, uh, fast forward in my journey, I'm able to crank push-ups out, push-ups, pull-ups out like it's nobody's business. Um, I can do 12 in a row, but um, I, you know, kind of break my sets up. Uh, sometimes I do a set to 10, and then sometimes I just do four sets of five. But, um, I mean, I can crank those out. I can push weight like nobody's business. I mean, I'm getting on the leg press. I'm putting four plates on each side and doing reps of 10 and having no issues, just pushing that stuff up. I mean, like, I can't believe it. I even put a fifth plate on either side and was able to push it. And I'm working on being able to rep that really well and really slowly get a good deep stretch in the leg and be able to push all the weight, push all that weight back out. You know, I'm impressed with myself. And so um, where I'm at in my fitness journey right now is I really wanted to do strength training, um, but unfortunately the the chiropractor I was working with, well, you know, he, I guess, got busy and wasn't able to continue to help me uh, with strength training. So I'm not really comfortable with lifting heavy by myself. So I switched over to bodybuilding and because um, you can get hypertrophy like pretty easy. So, I mean, it's going to, you can turn your leg down, but and arms or whatever, but that, that's fine. So, um, I switched over to that and you know that's pretty much how I got into this journey you know I, I, I was I was taught oh yeah by the way my neck coming back that was the reason why I had the headaches because my neck was like out all the time uh, probably due to sitting at this monitor and also uh, looking down at my cell phone my head weighing down on my neck was causing this tension headache so that's gone um, I don't have a fast heart rate anymore. I feel great. I can bust it, run a mile to the gym and turn around and do a, a hour to two hour set all around the gym, leg day, arm day, no, no issues. I feel great. Um, everything's like, I'm not taking the medications anymore. I, like, I don't know. Like I went from like thinking I was going to die to being in the best shape of my life and enjoying life, having fun, like, I am happy. I'm like, I am really happy and I'm very blessed. I'm thankful for the people who took the time to invest in me and kind of teach me things. Now I know my way around the gym. Um, and, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, now I, I would love to just model workout brands and my favorite, favorite brand is Nike. I love to model Nike um, and, you know, really just continue uh, about this body positivity thing. You know, like it's it's a big deal um, working out, getting muscles and being a female. You know, like my, my biggest thing was like, I don't want, I didn't, when I first met um, the chiropractor, you know, he was like, what are your body goals? And I was like, well, I don't want to get big because I don't want to, I don't want to look like a man, you know? And now here I am a year, a year later, uh, a year and a half later, like I want to get as big as I can, you know? But even then, as much of a body positivity person I, that I am, there's those periods of time that when I just put on a dress, I, I, I see all the muscles and then I see the dainty dress and I'm like, this doesn't match. And I just, I have that, those moments of, I don't like the way I look. And I just, I gotta keep like, bring it all back around. Like, this is you, you know, find the dress that fits you the way you are right now. But this is who you are. You need to love you where, you, where you're at. Um, and that it's okay to be strong. It's okay to be a woman and be strong. You know, um, it's not, strength is not a man thing. You know, strength is a human thing, you know, and um, you gotta love your love the body you're in. You know, take what looks awkward and make it look beautiful, you know. Um, so that's where, that's my story. And um, I hope that it helps somebody um, that 
the biggest takeaway I, I would say is do the transformation. Do the transformation. Wherever you are right now, there is a, another side on the complete opposite side. You know, and if where you are is is negative, it's something you don't like, you don't like the way you look or you're, you're not happy with, you know, your size or weight or whatever the case is, there is something, another life, another whole life on the other side of where you're living. And it is obtainable. And the barrier between the life where you are now and the life where you could be is faith and belief. And as if you believe that this life, this life exists, and you walk in faith towards this life, every one of those days is going to look like you're not going to see a lot of progress. It's, it's going to, you might look in the mirror, you see, see nothing, no changes, but it's your faith every day that gets you up, moves you towards this other goal. And one day you will look and you will see that you have hit that goal and you have come a long way. And you'll you'll be you'll have been thankful for the journey that you went through because now look at where you are, you know. Now look at what you have, and that it was worth it. And it was worth it to hang on to the belief, and it was worth it to walk through in faith. That was worth it. A lot of us use excuses, and we end up staying in the past. We end up staying exactly where we are. You know, we have this dream of what we want to do, but we don't have, we don't have that vision that's of the future of where you want to be and then walk in faith to get there. Doing all the necessary steps to get there. Things are going to have to fall off in order for that to happen. Old ways and old habits are going to have to drop, be dropped in order to have this new life. But when you hop over to that new life, the old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. You are literally a new person. It's worth it. So that's what I would say. That's my advice. That's my story. I hope it helps you all. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. I am making a ton of content. Um, it's hard to kind of balance life and like shoot YouTube videos at the same time, but I'm trying. So please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Visit me on um, uh, Instagram and TikTok. Again, there's not a lot of content yet, but there's going to be. I really am interested in sharing my story. I really am interested in, in helping anyone that I can. All right. Until the next one.